Hi, this is just going to be a quick follow-up video to my previous one on the Raspberry Pi 3 photosensitivity issue because uh, quite a few commenters asked, and I think uh, rightly so, um, that it might have been caused, this lock-up issue, when you use the photo flash on a camera on the Wi-Fi module here on the back, uh, which is a new issue which wasn't on the uh, Raspberry Pi 2, that it might have been caused uh, by, uh, you know, some people are saying like EMP. It's basically uh, magnetic coupling from the large amounts of current in the photo flash here onto the board. So it may have been an electrical coupling interference issue rather than photosensitivity of the bare die on the bottom here. So uh, that's a fair enough comment because... The photo flash on here, uh, there's a charge capacitor inside here, a photo flash capacitor, which charges up with a massive amount of energy and then dumps it very, very quickly into the uh, photo flash bulb here. And there's wires running up the sides here like this, so like the capacitors inside the camera and the wires running up here. This means there's a big loop area here. And what this loop area means is that any corresponding loop area on the board, uh, you can get uh, effectively magnetic transformer coupling, loosely coupled from this into this. You've got a high discharge current, very quick, um, that can generate um, EMF in loops inside here, primarily uh, power supply loops and other things. Some people might have said the antenna, but the antenna is not actually a loop as such. Anyway, we won't get into the, the details of that. I thought, yeah, that's a fair enough comment. So let's actually test it now. What I've got is um, I'm just uh, pinging here to uh, 8888, and you can see that our time there is, you know, 20 odd milliseconds or something like that. Occasionally it jumps up to 30 or something like that, and that's just fine. Now I've got some black electrical tape over the bare die Wi Fi chip down here. So let's use our flash and see if we can see any variation in that ping time. No, nothing whatsoever. And let's try it a few times, just for good measure, just to show that it wasn't uh, luck. And for reference, I've got uh, this about uh, 10 centimeters away, actually 11 centimeters away from the actual uh, chip itself. Now, I won't do anything different except physically remove the black electrical tape so our bare die Wi-Fi Bluetooth chipset is now exposed. Exactly the same camera position, all the same settings, and bingo, we got the thing to lock up. Now, oh, there, no, it, no, there we go, it actually recovered. I was going to say, I saw this a couple of times, it did actually recover. You see, it went up to 95 milliseconds there, and, but I had to reshoot this video, by the way, because I lost all my data, because I, don't ask, the memory card issue. Oh, there we go. A thousand milliseconds. And before I got it straight away, but it was actually 10 centimeters away before. So I'll do that. But anyway, that is confirmed. It is a photo flash issue and not, I'll put it back. There we go. So we've moved a bit closer. It is, that is definitely confirmed. It is a photo flash issue, photosensitivity issue with the bare die. The energy uh, at particular frequencies is getting through that die. And let's try it again now. See if I can get a complete lock up. I have actually had it recover like that, that you saw before. But then I have actually had it completely lock up. Hopefully it'll do it this time where it just does not recover at all. And it completely times out and we get no more internet. And I think maybe it's going to do that this time. So there you go. That is definitely confirmed. It is not any sort of uh, electrical uh, interference coupling issue, definitely photosensitivity of the dye, absolutely confirmed, and we'll actually start to see some messages. There we go, uh, no buffer space available. So we're completely locked up our internet, didn't recover, it's no good, you have to uh, reboot the board. And no, it doesn't matter how close I have it here, I've got it like three centimeters away now, it's right up its clacker basically, and we can there we go. We can flash that thing and it does absolutely nothing with the electrical tape in place. It's completely opaque. We take the electrical tape off and this puppy is going to lock up. Guaranteed. Bingo. Confirmed. 
And there were also uh, several people who wanted me to use the uh, D message uh, command, is it, or whatever it's called, I don't know, I've never used it before, uh, with the slash W follow option, so wait for new messages, uh, basically. So let's actually try that. Here we go. And I don't know what all that means. It's all Wi-Fi, chipset, Bluetooth, data, whatever. Anyway, it's waiting for a uh, response. I'll just put the tape over that and flash it. We're back at like 11 centimeters distance or anything, nothing. And take this off and there we go. And we got absolutely nothing out of that whatsoever. Let's go down a bit more, so we're closer, so we definitely know that it's going to lock up, and no, nope, we didn't get anything out of it whatsoever, sorry, and we will see that uh, that is definitely dead, there we go. So of course that's going to be exactly the same issue for the U16 power supply chip on here just like on the Raspberry Pi 2. There was basically no uh, reason to suspect it wasn't. Now, uh, sorry to anyone uh, who was watched my previous video, seemed to be quite a lot of people, a bit, bit of an uproar really, um, got the impression that I was making out that this was a somehow like a really big deal. and. It's not. I thought that was pretty obvious from the video that you had to have it so close that it's an unrealistic uh, scenario. And that Raspberry Pi uh, seemed to possibly, I don't know, we need confirmation from them, uh, maybe purposely tried to fix the U16 issue by putting that black coating on the top uh, from the Raspberry Pi too, because it wasn't really a big deal for the Raspberry Pi 2 either. It was kind of one of those niche things that if you use this exposed board and, you know, for an art installation or something and somebody came up and took a photo flash uh, photo of the thing, then yeah, it might reset and shut down. In any case, it wasn't a big deal back then um, because the fix was easy and there are, the odds of it happening to your average person are borderline zero. And, but it now has a black coating on it. It's probably an order of magnitude better, i.e. less sensitive, uh, to that reset issue on that chip. As, as you saw in my previous video, it had to be like, you know, an inch or two away, right up its clacker, in order to, you know, for it to reset and be an issue. And I thought that was pretty obvious, okay? I didn't, sorry if you got the impression that I made out that it was a big deal. It definitely isn't. I just did it as a follow-up a, a follow video to the previous one because nobody had tested the Raspberry Pi 3 that I could find anyway to see if this was still uh, a potential issue or not. Regardless of how small the issue is, academically, it is quite interesting and potentially, hey, I don't know the output of the flash on this uh, camera. If you had a big speed light thing on your digital SLR or something and you happen to have the bottom of your board uh, exposed like this with the bare Wi-Fi die and you were relying on the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever and it could remotely be an issue that you might have to take into consideration but most people will not have to worry about it. It's basically a non-issue, it's just interesting um, and I thought it was worthy just to point it out uh, to people that, you know, potentially that um, issue might exist regardless of how small it is. Anyway, the fix is easy. Black electrical tape, blue tack, um, some sort of, uh, you know, op anything opaque basically and non-conductive, some sort of um, silicone or something. It doesn't matter all. Whack it in a case as most people do. It's not a big deal. So sorry if you got the impression that I was making out that it wasn't. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. Definitely confirmed it is a photoelectric issue on that Wi-Fi chip. Still, a small problem, and hey, Raspberry Pi don't have to fix it. It's a low-cost, non-for-profit board. I'm totally aware of that, and, you know, no big deal. It's just an interesting video. Anyway, I hope you found that confirmation interesting, and I haven't done extensive tests with exactly how far the Wi-Fi, but you saw it was interesting that it sort of impulsed the Wi-Fi and upset it a little bit, and then it, it actually recovered and got the ping. I don't know if there's any other issues. I don't know if Bluetooth would fail uh, doing that or whatever. But, you know, I mean, the odds of it being that EMP thing were quite low, I think, because the chip designers, for example, they're going to, like this chip, they would have uh, been 
basically concerned about any, uh, you know, interference to it on the power supply and things like that. That's where they would have concentrated. But like the million odd transistors in this side, side this thing, or how many it is, and how many and which ones get affected by the photoelectric effect from this flash here at particular frequencies, practically impossible to know, predict, uh, protect against, or something like that. So, you know, that's just the thing with these bare dyes. A lot of people ask, start, why do they make these packages if they're photosensitive? Well, it applies to all bare dyes uh, like this, and because they're basically chip scale packages, um, they are really, really incredibly small. And these packages are what make your mobile phone and other ultra miniature products these days possible. If you put them in standard epoxy packages and everything, they're bigger and maybe only a little bit bigger, but all that space, extra space adds up. So uh, they're, you know, that's just the thing with these things. A bare die is technically photo sensitive. It's, it's nothing new. It's a very well known uh, phenomenon. And that's, you know, usually they go into cases, the mobile phone case or whatever, and they're not exposed to anything, so they're just fine. So there's nothing wrong with these uh, chipset packages. They're not bad design. They're just exposed dye. That's the nature of the beast. Anyway, hope you found that follow-up video interesting. Catch you next time.